All right, guys, y'all ready for this video? In the previous video, I showed you how this worked, how you can take old batteries, including that big bank way out there of old batteries, connect new batteries and old batteries together to get the best, get every dime out of your old batteries and not have to buy a whole brand new battery bank. It blows your mind. Go to that video, uh, just to subscribe and look in my video channel there. All right. This thing here is um, is going to save you thousands of dollars, and it's like 35 bucks. I'll put it in the list below. Keep an eye out. I'm going to put what I use in the list below, and then now we're going to go to how we're going to hook up a power inverter. Currently, it is hooked up right now, and I'm going to show you something that's very common. Now, this little Durafide is fairly tough. I put some beefier parts in it. And I'm using it as the example, and I'll also do it over here with the other ones, okay? But we're going to do something about how you hook up a power inverter without a big power arc, and I'll show you that. And I'm going to show you, uh, hopefully you can hear it, what it's going to do is when I pull power from this inverter, you get to listen to what it does. It's the loudest one I know of that does this. So all your inverters will do what this one's doing, this one just has a, it has a fairly loud transformer in it, okay? So, turn that air conditioner off and let's get over here so you can physically hear it. Now, taking my trusted, whatever, and we're going to put this, take this loose. This is its power. Go ahead and you'll track it all back here. Okay? Da-da, da-da. There's the bottom bank running at 1279. Here, pretty quick, that'll be disconnecting. So as soon as this bank up here drops below 12.8, that'll disconnect from the bottom bank, you know, parasitically. All right, so that uh, the other video, go watch it. It's a long freaking video. So, But I did it so that you guys can figure out how to do this. Man, you ain't got no idea what you're going to save doing it. All right. Now, I'm going to take this loose. Listen to that. Can you hear it? That's the capacitors draining down. They're dying, you know. Oh, help me. I'm melting. Now, you've probably hooked up inverters in your past, and you've, if you're watching this, you probably have, or you're wanting to. All right, and then you get to see this. And then sometimes you get to see smoke come right on out of them. And the inverter company says, well, did you use safe start wiring? Well, that, well, it's not in the paperwork. Oh, well, there's no warranty. All right, so here you go. Watch this, baby. You hear that? You see that pop? Now, this inverter's got 85-volt um, capacitors. So, so I'm okay. There. Now, we're going to show you a technique. We're going to remove this. Look, this is one-handed guy. And now we're going to go to how to charge up any inverter. It doesn't matter what size it is. I'll do it with this with five of them if you want me to. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put a link to this below. There's, there's certain brands that cannot handle what I'm doing. This one can. It's, it's an ATD, but there's like five different names on it. But it's a, it's, this is all made in the same whatever factory. Um, You'll want this one. You'll notice the build of it, and you'll notice this the type of wire, the silicon wire. There's a reason for that. Okay. Now, I want you to watch this bulb. Watch it carefully. We're going to just go into here and hit power. I'm going to get it right here on the bulb, and you're going to see that bulb. Listen to her. You hear that? That was a charge going in. Now, watch. I turn the switch off. Listen immediately went off it's bleeding down so it's trying to power turn the mosfet switches on you know for instant on and they all got that all right now now let's watch here we go i want you to pay attention to that bulb oh look at it dim look at it dim so now you use the resistance in that bulb this bulb trust me buy i'm gonna put that link you better get this one it uses the resistance in that bulb 
to energize safely and slowly, like a big shock absorber. Not the spring in there, man. <laughs> Pay attention to that. But the bulb. Now watch. If I give this, if I'd give this about two minutes, it'll leak down enough. Capacitors do that, man. They're not freaking batteries. Okay. Now, and give it a minute there. Now watch again. We're gonna take it. I just barely seen it. It just barely dimmed. So it's still stored enough power in there, but watch. Just kick it on for just a second. Now, watch it again. That bulb is your shock absorber. Look, no spark, no arc. Now, if I'm hurry about it, if I'm quick, I'll take this and I'll put that bolt in there. Now watch. No arc. Oh, crap, look. <laughs> Damn, Nico. So, you see that? No jolt of juice, no giga amps <laughs> going into this thing. It was a safe start. So, I can do the same thing over here. Now, this is a $700 inverter. Do I really want to? And you only do this through the positive, like you got your fuse missing. See? No fuse. Okay. All right. I'll loosen that up, get it ready, because I'll pop a fuse in this baby as soon as I get that in there, because I wanted to save this for my my view A's. You show y'all some of this here shiznit stuff. All right, so I'm just going to clamp that on kind of out of the way. Oh, I don't matter. I guess I can put it on that bolt head. There. Up. All right. And then we're going to do the same thing. This is a 3,000-watt true sine wave inverter. Takes a lot of juice, but let's watch. Those capacitors. Now, the capacitors are fully charged. And if I would have just swung this fuse, if I would have just dropped this fuse in there and swung it into place, it would have been a massive arc. It would have been a huge surge of power going into this inverter. And generally, it would have fried something. Look what the hell I did. I put it in backwards. I don't give a damn. All right. It would have fried something. So now we can power the unit on. Boom. Power, saber, function, on. How sweet. Now, go below the video and look for these. N not this one. It's a decent inverter. It's modified. Oh, hell. You want to see it? Look at this. Here we go. Harbor Freight Vacuum. I'll put a link to this. DSMM, whatever his name, eBay guy. All right. He, he sells these. And they took my suggestion about ordering them with the upgrade. So I'd say they're pretty tough now. All right. So we're going to put this, plug it in. Oh, get, get my finger in there. That's off. See, just a joke. Watch. Boom. Oh, so you know where the power's coming from. Big wad of cable. No, I don't got a secret hidden power plug in the floor. But what I do got is a 13 amp, uh, no, 9 amp. Nine, I think it's 9 amp. Sucker works. All right. So, and you'll see, oh, but a little bit of battery draw there. All right. And look, that disconnected. Okay. So we don't, freaking loud. We don't have our solar all hooked up right now. Um, I'm in the process. Uh, a little health issues are late last year, so. But there you go. You've seen how to hook up an inverter without that big arc. And I ain't gonna do it with this thing. It's 900 bucks. Um, well, you saw it. You don't get the arc. You don't get that onrush of power that blows out the caps. And if it doesn't blow out the caps, do you know what it'll blow out? It'll blow out that little bitty diode that's in front of each one of them MOSFETs and you're going to hate yourself. You have a hell of a time tracking it down. So you'll be like MOSFET's still good. You know, all right. So that was an easy video. I hope you guys understood that. I hope it made sense. I hope you wouldn't watch that one. I hope you bought your potato chips and dip for that. Um, but there we go. Freaking nice, huh? All right, this one over here is running with a piece of four. Piece of four. Uh, over here, this one's running with a two and a two, two-aught and a two. So two-gauge and two-aught. 
boom, running over here to this one, 240 volt, double phase. And of course, this one's going back in the box or probably out there to run the electric lawnmower. My wife uses this one in the pickup truck with three of these. Uh, 200 watts of solar on that roof thing to run her electric lawnmower for hours, which is good. I get to do, stay in here and do this stuff in the cool. <laughs> Y'all guys be good. Um, don't forget, this is also a regular test light, but it's the one here that has the best resistive and durable bulb. All right, guys. Y'all be good.